Lesson 21, I will use visual models to add two fractions with related units. Lesson 21 is a continuation of Lesson 20. We are going to continue the exact same strategies that we used in Lesson 20. We're just going to practice them a little bit more. You probably felt a little unsure after you finished Lesson 20 exactly how to do this. Hopefully after this lesson, you will feel a little bit more confident in being able to add fractions that have related units. Now because we are doing the same strategies as we did in Lesson 20, we are not going to use our journal today. We are going to skip right ahead to the problem set because again, we're using those same strategies. So in your problem set, you're going to notice that the directions say, draw a tape diagram to represent each add-in. Remember an add-in is two numbers that you add together in an addition sentence. Decompose one of the tape diagrams to make like units. Then write a complete number sentence. Use a number bond to write each sum as a mixed number. Now they added this last direction. We did this in, in Lesson 20 even though the directions didn't tell us to. Alright, so let's take a look at our very first one. We're going to start by drawing a tape diagram. Remember, this is just like what we did in Lesson 20. So we're going to draw two tape diagrams. And I'm going to begin by dividing one into thirds and one into halves. So I'm going to start by dividing my halves and then take each half and divide them into fourths and then I'm going to just take my half here. So I'm going to go ahead and shade. So first I'm going to shade three out of four. That's three fourths and then I'm going to shade one half. Okay, so which of these can I decompose so that I have like units? Well if I decompose these I'm just going to have more parts and that's not going to get me to over here. So I've got to take the one that has less parts and decompose it into more parts so that these will have the same number of parts. Right now this has four parts and this only has two. So if I decompose my halves into halves again, now I have one, two, three, four parts here and one, two, three, four parts here. So now I have like units. I have three fourths and now over here I have two fourths. So now I can add them together. 3 fourths plus 2 fourths equals 5 fourths. So remember this is an improper fraction, so we're going to change this to a mixed number. 5 fourths is the same as 4 fourths, which is a whole, with 1 fourth left over. So 5 fourths would be the same thing as 1 whole and 1 fourth. Alright, let's take a look at B. So we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to draw a tape diagram to represent 2 thirds and a tape diagram to represent three sixes. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and do this first part by yourself. Divide this tape diagram into two thirds and this one into three sixes and shade them and then come back. All right, so hopefully you paused the video and you took your first tape diagram and you divided it into three parts just like this. And then your second diagram, I'm gonna divide it into three parts and then I'm gonna divide each third in half so that I'll have sixes just like this. So now I have thirds over here and sixes over here. Now I'm going to shade. So I'm going to shade two out of three and then three out of six. Okay, so just like in the last problem, if I come over here and try to decompose these sixes, I'm going to have even more parts. And right now this tape diagram has more parts than this part. I want them to be the same. So I'm going to come over here to the thirds and I'm going to decompose them by taking each third and splitting it into two parts. And now instead of thirds, these are sixes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six here, and I have sixes here. So on this tape diagram, I have four sixes because two thirds is equal to four six. And over here, I have three sixes. So four six plus three six equals seven sixes. So again, I have an improper fraction. So I'm gonna use my number bond here this is the same thing as six sixes with one six left over. So six sixes equals one whole, and then I have one six left over. So it's one and one six. All right, so we're gonna continue the same strategy for C and D. So I'd like for you to try to do as much of C by yourself as you can. Go ahead and pause the video and at least complete the tape diagrams. If you can go ahead and decompose it and write your number sentence, great. So pause the video now and do as much as you can. Okay, so hopefully you were brave and you paused the video and you tried to do as much of this as you can. I'm going to start by taking this one and dividing it into thirds and then dividing my thirds into sixes. So this is going to be 
five sixes, and then this one's going to be my thirds. Now I'm going to shade. So I'm going to begin by shading five out of six, which is almost one hole, and then one out of three. Okay, there's nothing I can do to these sixes to get them to thirds, but I can take the thirds and I can decompose them in half, and then I will have sixes. So now both of these have six parts. So over here, I have five out of six, and here I have two out of six. So when I take five six plus two sixes, that gives me seven sixes. Now when I take these and split them in half, I have six sixes and one six, which is the same as one and one six. All right, let's take a look at D. All right, so I've got four fifths and seven tenths. Again, I'd like to see if you can do as much of this by yourself as you can and then come back and check with me. So pause the video and see how much of this you can do by yourself. All right, so I'm gonna start by dividing this into five parts. Okay, these are gonna be my fists. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, divide this into five parts. And then I'm going to take each of these fifths and divide them in half so that now I will have tenths. Okay, so I'm going to shade four out of five, which is almost a whole, isn't it? And I'm going to shade seven out of ten. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm going to decompose these fifths and make them tenths. So now I have eight tenths and seven tenths. So eight tenths plus seven tenths gives me 15 tenths. 15 tenths is the same thing as 10 tenths and five tenths. So 15 tenths is one and five tenths. All right, now we have a little bit of a different um, <clears throat> direction. Draw a number line to model the addition, then write a complete number sentence. Use a number bond to write each sum as a mixed number. So this is that same strategy that we did yesterday, which I'm going to be honest with you, was not my favorite. I thought it was a little bit confusing, but we'll work through these together. All right, so we have one half plus three fourths. Well, three-fourths is greater than a half. So if I have a half plus something greater than a half, I know my number line is going to have to go from zero to two. So make your number line nice and long so that when we divide this into parts, they won't get too small. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to divide these into halves using my red half and a half. Okay, now I'm going to take each half and divide them into fourths like this so we can tell the difference between the halves and the fourths. All right, so one half is the same as two fourths, okay? So we're going to start here and go plus one half, and then we're going to go plus three fourths. So one, two, three fourths. So I have two fourths plus three fourths equals five fourths. And five fourths is the same as four fourths and one fourth left over. So that's going to be equal to one and one fourth. Okay, let's try B. So again, I have a half and then I have six eighths. Well, six eighths is almost a whole. So I know that one whole plus one half is going to be greater than one. So again, my number line has to go from zero to two. Okay, so then here I'm going to have my one right here. So I'm going to start with my red and divide it into halves like this. And then I'm going to divide each half into half. Now I have fourths, but I need to get to eight. So I have to come back and divide each one of those in half again so that I'll have eight parts. I forgot to go back and count these because this is getting a little out of, out of uniform shape here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three four, five, six, seven. Okay, so they are eight parts, even though they're definitely not equal. All right, so how many eighths are in half? Well, half of eight is four, so one half is the same as four eighths. So this will be one half or four eighths. I'm going to start here. 
I'm going to add 1 half, and that was supposed to stop at the red line. It didn't exactly do that, but pretend it did. And then I'm going to go 6 more eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to go all the way over to here, which is 6 eighths. And this says 6 eighths. So 4 eighths plus 6 eighths equals 10 eighths. And 10 eighths is the same as 8 eighths with 2 eighths left over. So that's the same as 1 and 2 eighths. All right, let's take a look at the back here. Okay, so we have the same directions. We're going to draw number lines and we're going to rename the fractions. Okay, so I have 7 tenths and 3 fifths. Again, this is greater than 1 half and this is greater than 1 half, so I know that I'm going to have to draw my number line from 0 to 2 because 0 to 1 will not be long enough. So I've got 0 and then this is 2 and then in the middle will be 1. So I'm going to begin by dividing this into 5 parts. Again, I'm going to use my red pen so that you can tell the difference. So 1, 2, 3, 4 lines makes 5 parts. 1, 2, 3, Four, and then I'm going to come back and divide these in half to make tenths, just like this. Okay, so, so I'm going to start with seven tenths. So I start here and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going to be this black one right here. So I'm going to go from zero to seven tenths. Now, how many tenths? would there be in 3 fifths? Are you learning that pattern yet? Because 10 is twice 5. That means that when I turn these fifths into tenths, I'm going to have double the amount. So I'm going to go ahead, 6 tenths. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this would be 6 tenths. So now I have 7 tenths plus 6 tenths equals 13 tenths, and 13 tenths is the same as 10 tenths with 3 tenths left over, so it's equal to 1 and 3 tenths. All right, let's try D. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable with these number lines in this lesson than I did the lesson before. I hope that you're feeling that too. All right, so again, I've got 5 sixes, which is almost a whole. And then I have two-thirds, which is almost a whole. So my number line, again, has to go from 0 to 2. So I'm going to go all the way from 0 to 2. 0, 2, and then I'm going to put my 1 in the middle. So I'm going to start with thirds, like this. Here's my thirds. And then I'm going to take each of my thirds and divide them into halves and make them sixes, just like this. Okay? So I have two-thirds and five sixes. So I'm going to start by going from zero to two thirds. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five sixes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to end up right here plus five sixes. So let's think about that pattern that we've learned here. So if I'm going to change these thirds into sixes, I'm going to double the denominator. I'm also going to double the numerator. So I'm going to have four sixes plus five sixes equals eleven sixes. That's going to be six six. That's a six right here. Six sixes with five sixes left over. So eleven sixes is the same as one and five sixes. All right, now it says solve and write the sum as a mixed number. Draw a model if needed. Now you're going to notice that these are all related numerators. So I can add fourths to eighths. So I've got to change these fourths into eighths. So think about this. If I double the fourths and make these eighths, I have to double the threes and make it six. So I'm going to have six eighths plus two eighths which equals 8 eighths, which equals 1 whole. All right, let's see if we can do this one. So if I'm going to change these halves into sixes, what am I going to do to the halves? First, I'm going to write down the sixes here. If I'm going to change this half to sixes, what did I do? I tripled the 2. I have to triple the 1. It has to become a 3. So now I have 
seven sixes, which is the same as six six, and one six, which is the same as one and one six. Now remember, if this is confusing to you, you can always draw your tape diagrams just like we did on the front, and you can model these. I'm doing them without a model, but if you were doing this by yourself and you needed the model, you could always draw it. All right, so I've got four sixes, and then I've got two thirds. So if I take these thirds and I double them to make them sixes, I've got to double the numerator too, which will make this four. So that's going to give me eight sixes, which is the same thing as six six with two sixes left over, which is the same as one and two sixes. All right, so I have eight tenths. And if I'm going to add that to three fifths, so if I double my fifths and make them tenths, that means that these three become six. And I have 14 tenths, which is the same thing as 10 tenths and 4 tenths. Okay? All right. <clears throat> if you're feeling like you can do one of these or more than by yourself, go ahead and pause the video. If you're still feeling uncomfortable, you can continue to do as many with me as you need to. All right, so I've got 5 eighths. And I'm going to change these fourths to eighths. So if I divide my fourths or decompose them into eighths, these three parts become six because I doubled them. So now I have 11 eighths, which is the same thing as eight eighths and three eighths, which is one and three eighths. Okay, so I have five eighths. Now, if I take these fourths and I double them and make them eighths, then instead of two, I'm going to have four ace, which is nine ace, which is the same thing as eight ace and one eighth, which is the same as one and one eighth. Okay, so now we have halves. So if I don't do anything to my five ace, but I want to turn these halves into eights, what's half of eight? Four. So four eighths is the same as one half. So I have nine eighths, which is the same thing as eight eighths, and one eighth, which equals one and one eighth. Okay, try to do this last one all by yourself. Use any strategy you want to. If you want to draw a model, if you want to draw a number line, if you want to use multiplication, whatever you want to do, but try to do this last one all by yourself. So pause the video and then come back and let's see if we get the same answer. So I have three tenths, if I want to change these fifths into tenths, if I double the five, I also double the four, which makes it eight, which gives me 11 tenths. And now I have 10 tenths with one tenth left over. So it's one and one tenth. Okay, so hopefully you're feeling a little more confident about adding fractions with unlike denominators. Remember to check your problem set if you get confused. It's always a good resource for you.